All right, this is the continued reading for science, week three, day three, climate change. If sea levels were rising high enough and fast enough, many cities along the coasts or and on small islands would be flooded by ocean waters and destroyed. These cities might include New York City, Boston, and other large cities within millions of, with millions of people. Earth's surface temperature affects the water in many complex ways. Computer models predict that weather in different parts of the world would be affected by continued warming in different ways. In some areas, it could become drier and more difficult to grow crops. This would lead to water and food shortages. In other areas, the growing season would lengthen because of the warmer, wetter weather. Crops in these areas would become easier to grow. Changing weather caused by global warming might also mean more hurricanes, tornadoes, wood, snowstorms, or droughts, depending on where a person lives. Well, that's pretty general. An angry living lady. Brazil city of Rio de Janeiro faced a Dinge fever epidemic in March of 2008. Mosquitoes helped spread the disease. I like that sign. I want that on my house. Warmer weather could mean more disease. Many kinds of viruses, bacteria, and other germs spread more easily when the weather is warm than when it is cool. Among such diseases are malaria, dengue, I don't know how to say that, doesn't show, a disease that is that causes fever and pain and lung infections. How does global warming affect you? You might have to conserve electricity such as watching less television and using the computer less often. Should I put a laughing face there? I'm sure people are going to do that. You might have to deal with more tornadoes, hurricanes, heat waves, and other dangerous weather effects. Uh, not if you live here in Thai Valley because there is no, you can't have a hurricane if you don't have a large body of water. And we don't have a large body of water, so they can just enjoy that. And tornadoes, possibly, but not likely. Probably heat waves, which would be great because I just bought a pool. You might experience water or food shortages. You might be increased risk of getting certain diseases, and you might find that wild animals you enjoy seeing, such as certain birds, butterflies, become less common. Mm, I don't know. It's pretty touch and go there. What is being done about climate change? All right, here we go. This is what people are already doing. I'm going to try to improve the clarity. There we go. What is being done about climate change? Because of the serious effects that climate change might have on a human, on human society and wildlife habitats, government, governments around the world are working on this problem. They have come up with a plan to limit the possible effects of global warming. Good. Governments of most countries support a plan to limit global warming called Kaito Protocol. This plan is named after a city in Japan where the first version of it was written in 1997. According to the plan, industrialization, industrialized countries will reduce the amount of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases released by power plants, cars, and other sources. Industrialized countries are those nations in which widespread use of machinery and fossil fuels with greenhouse gases gas reductions have to be enough to reach certain levels by certain dates depending on the country. My husband said something that was very fascinating the other day. I don't usually listen to a lot, but I did this one. He said that he was looking at cars and there's this twin turboed car and or this turboed car and he said that they get so much better gas mileage and they have so much more power. Why people don't just require that as, you know, coming into the country, it would reduce the amount of gas used as well as a few other things. I just thought that was very interesting. I would agree. Plus, you get a little bit more power and you can save gas. As of 2010, the government of the United States has not approved the Cato Protocol. Some, of, some officials of the United States government were concerned that the Cato Protocol might harm the U.S. economy. 
both the federal, it's kind of laughable because of what's going on right now, but whatever. Both the federal government and the state governments of the United States are working to reduce emissions releases of greenhouse gases in other ways. For example, some laws require power plants and factories to reduce their carbon dioxide emissions, such as using things like scrubbers. Scrubbers are filtering systems that trap carbon dioxide or other pollutants before they are released into the, released into the air. Certain newer systems can then store the carbon dioxide underground. Other laws require that cars emit less carbon dioxide. On our Dodge Ram, we have this lovely emission system that does something like that. It's super awesome. Not really. <clears throat> Some U.S. facilities have reduced the amount of greenhouse gases they emit, but others have not. Well, that's helpful. There's a coin toss, I suppose. Okay, we're almost done with this article. Here we go. Last two pages. The U.S. government also gives grants to scientists to help them study renewable ways of producing energy. Most renewable energy sources do not use fossil fuels or emit greenhouse gases. They are called renewable because unlike fossil fuels, their supplies will, even, will not eventually run out. Renewable, res renewable energy sources include hydropower, power, and geothermal, wind, and solar power. Hydropower uses moving water, such as a river, to produce energy. Geothermal power uses hot water or steam from inside the ground. Wind power uses moving air. Solar power uses sunlight. Nuclear power is another way to produce energy and does not emit greenhouse gases. However, nuclear power produces dangerous wastes. Yeah, that's kind of a big deal. Besides cutting emissions of greenhouse gases, we can also remove some greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. The best way to do this is by planting more trees. Hmm. Conclusion. What do you think? Now that you know what scientists have discovered about climate change and global warming, it is time for you to think for yourself. What do you think about climate change? How would you answer the following questions? What evidence can you give to support your answers? Is Earth war becoming warmer? If so, why is the Earth becoming warmer? Could there be more than one reason why the planet, planet is warming? Why might some results of global warming for plants and what might sorry what might be some results of global warming for plants, animals, and humans? Which results do you think are most likely and least likely? What, if any, should be done about climate change? Will you change your behavior in any way to help reduce climate change? If so, in what ways? How will you find out more about climate change? I would just like to say all of this should have been put in the front of the text. Those are the types of questions that you're asking before you read this. Because this really should be why you're reading this article. However, I would like to say that they gave very poor evidence for a lot of things and they never represented the other side of the case. That's just me pointing that out. Ways you can fight global warming. You Less use of lo fossil fuels equals less release of greenhouse gases. You can reduce your greenhouse fossil or your fossil fuels by using less electricity, recycling aluminum, tins, papers, and plastics, walking or riding your bike to places where you could go, Using a solar power electronic products, such as calculators and watches, seriously. Planting trees and cultivating a garden. Okay, fine. Planting trees, really, a calculator or a watch. Because people use plugged-in watches. Okay, uh, sorry, I just had to point that out. All right, well, that's the end of this reading. I hope you have some good questions. And remember, you can use this text to answer the questions on the test that I will be reading for tomorrow.